So now that we've updated our create activity, let's head over to Postman and take a look at what we're going to be doing to test this inside this particular tool. Now if we open up module 14 folder, what I've got here is a request to log in as Bob and save the token to environment. And our login as Bob is pretty normal. We're just using the URL that we're storing as the collection variable. And then we've got our API user and login. And in the body of this request, we're just sending up our email and password just as normal. What's different about this particular request is inside the tests inside Postman. Now we've not been looking at Postman tests and this will be a very brief introduction to testing in Postman. And what we can do is check the response that we get back from our API and we can get this in a JSON format and, we, and PM is postman.response.json and we'll store this in a user variable. And then we can check and test to make sure that the response inside the user object has various properties. Now in this case we're checking to see that the or the test is called has properties and then we give it a function and we make various tests and in this case we're, we're saying that Postman expects the user object to have property display name, username, image and token. And what we're also doing inside here is we're checking to see if this test passes and if it does then we're going to set a global variable and we're going to call it token and set it to the user.token. And if we take a look at the global variables inside Postman and we can access them via this gear icon here and then click on globals and we can see the states of our global variables inside Postman. Now there's nothing in here in, inside here at the moment. But if I make our request and log in as Bob then what's going to happen when we get the token back from the server we're going to set our global variable with our user token. So I'm going to click on send and of course I get no response because my API is not started so I'm just going to cd into the API say .NET watch run and press return and go back to Postman and retry that request and this works just as normal we get our token back along with our user object but if I take a look at the global variables again, now this time we've got a token stored inside there, which is set to the current value of the token for Bob. And what we can do then is if I look at the get activities request inside here, what we're doing when we send up the header is we're setting we're sending up the token that we've got stored inside our global variables. And this just makes it significantly easier to log in and test our various methods that all require authentication. So if I just click on send, we'll find that because we've got the token inside our global variables, this is what's being sent up as our request with our request. And we can see our activities just as normal. So what we want to do is we want to actually test that we can create an activity with the current user as host. And inside here, we've got the body of our request. We're using a GUID to create this. And it's just a normal activity with Bob as the host. And if we take a look at our pre-request script, this is the same as before. We're just creating a new activity that's going to take place in 14 days. And if we take a look at the tests, then all we're doing here is just checking that the response has a status code of 200. And in the headers, we're also sending up the token for Bob as well. So let's click on send. And we get a 200 OK. But we've got currently no way of seeing the effects of this because whilst we do get a user activities property back now inside our activity, it's currently set to null because we're not including our activities with this response. So what we're going to look at next is how we can load our related data with our activities when we send them back so that we do see the details of the user that signed up. But before we do, 
Let's just make sure that when we added that activity inside our SQL database, we have a new entry in our user activities table. So I'm just going to open the database and reactivities DB and inside the Explorer, I'm just going to take a look at SQLite and the user activities table and just show table. And what we'll see inside here is our app user ID, our activity ID, the date joined and the fact that the user is the host. And this app user ID will be the ID for Bob. Again, please ignore the GUID that looks a bit wonky inside SQLite. It's obviously not causing us a problem during development, so please don't worry about it. It will be different inside a database that supports GUIDs. So what we want to take a look at next is how we can return related data with our requests. And we'll take a look at that next.